How many friends have you made today? Chapter 13, Part 3. So this is what the pony looks like out of that suit. Anand has to admit that he thought she would look bulky or something, yet she just looks like any run-of-the-mill mare. Spitfire takes notice of the two princesses standing at her table. She nods her head in a bow. Hello, Princess Celestia, Princess Luna. She lifts her head to them, but flinches back slightly when she spots a creature between them. I'm sorry, I don't think we've met. Anon looks to Spitfire, she extends her hoof to him. It's been a long time since he shook another creature's hand or hoof in this instance. He wraps his fingers around her hoof and gives it a few shakes. Anon. He answers. Spitfire, it's nice to meet you. She says with a smile. Anon feels a brow raise. This pony actually sounds genuine. He's gotten used to ponies being wary of him, but is it because that he's with the princesses? He's not really sure. Uh, it's nice to meet you too. He responds back, and Spitfire chuckles. There's no need to be nervous, I'm just like everyone else. Everyone? <laughs> now that's interesting. I assure you that it's not your status that's giving me pause, you just seem rather... down to earth. He decides to say, and she gives a nod. Eh, I guess everyone says the same thing, but might I ask what you are? I've done shows pretty much everywhere on this planet, but I don't think I've ever seen your kind before. Anon gives a nod. I would be surprised if you have. Let's just say that it's, uh, complicated. Oh, I know what complicated means. Magic, I assume? She asks. Something like that. Mm, shame. So, how'd you like that show? Anon feels a smile show on his face. Best thing I've seen on two worlds. Spitfire catches his drift as she smiles back. Well, that's the best compliment I think I'll ever get. Can I get your autograph by chance? He asks, and she nods. Of course. Who should I make it out to? Anon, Celestia, and Luna. He says. The two princesses are actually having a great time watching Anon talk to this pony. They've never seen him look so relaxed around any pony, with the exception of them. Spitfire signs the headshot of herself. Something that she has done many times before, but she does feel a sense of pride that a being from another world actually likes what she does. She finishes up the autograph and slides it over with her hoof. Anon picks up the picture and looks it over. You know, for a pony, you aren't half bad. He says, as he looks to the image. That makes Spitfire's brow raise. <laughs> what does he mean by that? Spitfire! A shout can be heard in the crowd. Spitfire looks past Anon and spots a rainbow mane in the crowd. She doesn't even have time to groan as the Pegasus in mind comes trotting past the line and up to her booth. Spitfire would like nothing more than to ban this particular Pegasus from her shows, but the chances that are 90% of the sales for Wonderbolt's merchandise would take a dive. However, Spitfire notices Anon freeze up as he keeps looking at the autograph. Not only that, but the two princesses' fur seem to stand on end. The Rainbow Pegasus trots up merrily to her booth. As soon as she's in front, she gives Spitfire a smile, seeming totally oblivious of the two sisters that are glaring daggers at her and Anon who is still frozen in place. Uh, hey, Rainbow Dash. Spitfire says nervously. She can feel that something isn't right here. Right in front of Celestia is one of the ponies that had caused Anon harm. She can feel her body tense up as the memories of what she did to Anon flash through her mind. Luna wasn't that far from the same train of thought as well, however hers were more along the lines of teaching this pony a few lessons that she would never forget. Rainbow Dash on the other hoof is blissfully ignorant of everything around her. You were awesome! Rainbow shouts. When he did that thing, and then he turned only to have done a loop? Spitfire feels herself zone out a bit. She can't even count how many times she had to sit here and listen to this pony ramble on and on about what she's done. However, she just puts on her fake listening smile and nods every few moments to make the Pegasus think that she's listening. Spitfire finds her eyes moving over to the new creature that she met, and she can spot how tense he is. But why? The princesses are in the same boat as well, is it... Is it Rainbow? Rainbow Dash notices that Spitfire is looking at something to her right. Rainbow looks over and notices two lines. Her brow raises in confusion. What the heck are those? She then slowly looks up and finds the creature Discord summoned. What is that thing doing here? <laughs> He's probably here to try and destroy Spitfire. Spitfire notices a few cues in Rainbow's stance that throw up warning flags faster than her takeoff on the starting line. Rainbow? Spitfire calls her name to stop her from doing something foolish. I want you to meet a friend of mine. Rainbow looks to Spitfire, then anon in bewilderment. <laughs> this? This thing is your friend? She says as if it was a joke. Spitfire feels a frown grow on her face. She's been all over this world, met many different creatures in her time, and while she may have just met Anon, he seems like an easy enough character to get along with. Yes, he is. Spitfire says with a hardened tone. Rainbow flinches back at that. She looks at Anon and then notices that the princesses are there as well. They're both glaring at her with such fierce expressions that she feels her bravado from before melt away. Celestia takes a few steps towards Rainbow, a look on her face that would make any pony quick on their hooves. 
She lowers her head so that she's face to face with her, something that catches the breath of every pony around. Tell my student that when Anon returns to Ponyville, I want her and all of the elements in Town Square. We have something dire that needs to be fixed. Rainbow Dash gulps at the look Celestia's giving her. However, she can feel that something is important about whatever she's talking about. She doesn't even care about Spitfire anymore, as she zooms out of the room and towards Ponyville at breakneck speeds. Celestia raises her head with a small sigh. That took all of her strength to not have struck that mare. However, now a certain punishment for her comes to mind. Celestia feels her smile come back as she looks to Spitfire. Sorry for the interruption. While I'm here, may I ask that you come to the castle tomorrow? Spitfire had never seen the look the princess had given Rainbow Dash before, and something about it sends a shiver down her spine, and not for herself, but for Rainbow. Uh, sure. She answers. Celestia looks over to Anon and worry. She can feel that all of his emotions are gone. He must have withdrawn inside himself when Rainbow noticed him. Come along, Anon. I think we should rest a while in the castle. He gives a quiet nod. As the three of them walked past the crowd and towards the exit, Spitfire can't help but feel that she just got dragged into something big. Luna is pressed firmly against Anon during the ride back to the castle. She worries about him. He hasn't spoke once since that mare showed up. All he's been doing is looking at that autograph, almost as if he were in a trance. Anon, please say something. Luna begs. Celestia is worried for Anon as well. She'd never seen him withdraw this much into himself during his time at the castle. Yet, here he is, emotionally dead. Anon just looks at the photo in his hand. He traces the outline of Spitfire's image. He's just... Trying to focus his mind on what he's looking at. Her yellow coat, two-tone mane, those tangerine-colored eyes. He needs to focus on something to help ignore his emotions. He thinks back to that moment, how his conversation with Spitfire was actually going pretty well. He honestly shouldn't be surprised that Rainbow Dash would be there. Pinky told him all about how much Rainbow talks about the Wonderbolts. That's the only reason that he's even heard of them. Pinky would tell him how much of a fan Rainbow is and how she has plans to become part of the Wonderbolts. Anon always held his tongue around Pinky. She seems to really care about her friends a lot, and she was always nice to him, so he never really found a reason to tell her about what Rainbow was doing to him at the time. His mind goes back again to what she said, what Spitfire said. Did she really call him a friend? Did she really defend him despite him having just met her? He isn't used to ponies doing such things for him. It seems like nowadays the only ponies that even try to defend him are Bon Bon or the princesses. Not that he needs to be defended, he honestly just ignores all the words and whispers. But he does feel empty, a feeling that he's familiar with, yet rather than feel comforted by this, he feels scared by it. He's so lost in his mind that he doesn't even know where he is right now. Celestia and Luna can both see him lost in thought. Luna looks to her sister. They cannot allow this to go on, sister. Celestia nods. I know. I think it is time that we sit down and discuss the punishments for the elements. Luna gives a nod, just before she turns her attention back to Anon. Anon isn't deaf, he heard what Celestia just said. He can feel a large pressure build up in him, a mixture of fear, sadness, and anger filling him. He looks up from the image to Celestia, a singular thought present in his mind. I want to say, Anon says with no emotion. A say in what? Celestia asks. I want to say on how those girls are punished. Celestia and Luna look to each other uncertain. They guess it's the right thing to do, Anon is the victim. He should get a say in what happens. All right. Celestia agrees. Anon looks out the carriage window as they approach Canterlot. He doesn't know what will happen, but all he knows is that it'll happen soon. One could only imagine what Anon has planned for them. He could have them exiled, he could have them in solitary confinement, he could send them to death. But I don't know about the death part. Baseline is, anything could happen. Anywho, let's get on to our very positive donators. Top donators, TacoCat598. Peter Coltard, J Tin Man, Darkseid, Gauntlet, and only one thing. Zar630, Strix, Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moonheart, Trick Love Dragon, Pastel Skies, Austin Roland, Crazy Killer 557, Stu Hex, Will, James Burner, Dospo, Delta Omega, Jack Hadge, Runescythe9852, Leslie Perkett, Hunter Norman, Stephen Bingham, Line God12, and many more wonderful people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.